Hey, what's going on guys? Full Fronted here today, bringing you guys a Brawl Stars video, and I have very special guests for the channel today, the boys from Omen Elite, Cory, Super Sai, Tyrant, and Zulon. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the channel. How's it going? Great. Thanks for having us, man. Pleasure, pleasure. All right, so um, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions while we have your May Qualifier Championships going on in the background against Red Buttons. So to start things off, um, what does a typical day look like for a Brawl Stars Pro? Um, it's actually not as extensive as someone might think, especially because we're not what you call ladder warriors we don't just grind ladder i mean that helps you but it only gets you to one like a certain point after that you just gotta scrim and that's how you get better um so we're leading up to qualifiers we're gonna scrim a lot obviously but we we also make sure that we scrim um in the downtime too so we don't get rusty but it's not as bad as someone might think it's really it's it's pretty manageable i'd say i'm a student too so our uh tyrant and Corey and zulon so yeah time management is key but it's definitely manageable um we don't scrim like every single day we don't put in crazy amount of hours we uh we kind of like when we're leading up to a competition that's when we start to grind more to get ready for that competition um but other than that we just scrim a few times a week um we play tournaments every once in a while just to keep keep fresh you know yeah i just play for like two hours of life and just do some scrims that's about it a typical day for me would be just waking up in the morning, um, getting breakfast in, getting practice, actually bot practice against bots, practice my movement, uh, just lining my shots with my movement, then just playing a little bit of ladder by myself so I can like just not carry my teammates that are randoms but like just get better or like warm up and then maybe have a scrim with the boys at night uh pro scrim against other against another good team and yeah that would be about it cool so you mentioned um doing bot games is that something that uh like players aspiring to become better should do like would you recommend them doing that well for me it works because uh, you basically practice your movement and basically wall peeking. And I would suggest to do that, but it's completely not the best method. Many pros don't do it. I would, I would think that it's a completely personal thing to do, but I would really suggest to try it and yeah, and see if it works. I know a lot of other pros push ladder. Um, is it helpful to push ladder or does it kind of like set you guys uh, back or distract you from competitive play in any way? I'd say that like, as I said, like just uh, like it gets you to one point, like it's good to warm up using ladder, I'd say, but for scrims, I think that's the most ideal to be in the competitive mood. Um, definitely you learn more and you get better um, in scrims than ladder. That's what I think. Yeah, I would say, um, like, when you play ladder, you play against a lot of people that uh, aren't as good as, as, like, the competitive players, so you tend to get more confident in your abilities, and, like, sometimes I find that ladder makes me make more mistakes in competitive, um, so I focus more on, mostly on scrims. What are your guys' current thoughts on the format of the qualifiers? I personally really like the seeding part they added in for... I think across all regions. Um, the one thing I would change it, it would probably be um, the number of spots in a team schedule because I honestly think there are as many like, competitive or like top tier teams in NA as or, or even more so than other regions. Yeah, um, I th I like the format. To be honest, uh, it's kind of unfortunate with the COVID nineteen how it had to change, mm -hmm. um, but. To be honest, it is a very good format. I um, mean, it's it's very fair with seating and everything. So, um, like Sai said, I mean, of course, we'd love one more spot for NA because um, some of the top tier teams in NA are, you know, can, can compete with Europe and Asia. I think. Yeah, I, I think um, the quality, the format's pretty good. You no, know? 
I'm, I believe NA had the second most, but we still only get one spot, which sucks. But yeah, I think it's overall pretty good. Well, I really do like them. The only thing I don't like really is that um, the only team that qualifies is the first place. I really do not like that at all because like there are, there are not as many teams as Europe, but if you really think about it, the really, really good teams in Europe are like five through six, maybe. And they have qualified all like the same teams have qualified. And if you look at an A, it's basically the same thing. Uh, it's like four, five, four to six good teams. So I really do not like that um, only one spot qualifies. I would really like that to change. But uh, other than that, the, the the partnership they have done with ESL, I really do like that. I like the uh, that you get an invitation, a really good professional invitation. I really like that. Europe had over 4,000 teams sign up for this previous qualifier. What do you guys think separates Europe with that amount of players so much over other regions? So Europe is, is huge and Bra uh, Brawl Stars is huge in Europe. Um, they have so many people that are like high up and, and are like willing to play competitive. And so, yeah, I mean, in, in North America, we only have so many teams. Um, one thing I think is like we need like some sort of like rank system to for teams to like prove themselves worthy and start competing so you know that that's something we kind of need um in other regions well in every region i guess one thing though it is it is kind of difficult when you only have one team that makes it to the the world finals um from north america and from south america like that i think that's the hardest part is where you're competing with so many other great teams and at the end of the day only one gets to go i think that's um, that's what needs to kind of change, <laughs> I think. Yeah, def definitely makes sense. Um, so to lighten the mood a little bit, what's your guys' favorite brawler? I personally would say it has to be Piper for me. Uh, she's just uh, she's a sniper. Uh, it's very I just like playing her. I like her play style. It's pretty fun. She could be a game changer, but you could also throw with her. So, yeah. Danny would be very proud. <laughs> Uh, my favorite brawler is Carl because honestly, um, you can just kind of like outplay a lot of people and you can, you know, spin, you can 2, 2v1. So um, I think it also takes a little bit of skill to play Carl and, and good decision making. So that's why I like Carl. Uh, my favorite brawler always changes the meta, but for now it's Brock because it's pretty sat satisfying to hit his shots and he takes a fair bit of skill too. BB. Um, I used to play baseball and she has the baseball bat. I like the way she knocks people off and I really, I just like her, man. BB's my favorite brawler by far. Nice. So before we started recording, we were talking about uh, gadgets a little bit. Uh, how much do you think gadgets are going to change the meta in competitive play? I, okay, so we already did some squares with gadgets and the play style is incredibly drastically different from without gadgets and with gadgets especially in, you could see this in bounty uh the amount of stars on each team is so da drastically increased from without gadgets it's just it's it's different it's very different wow. it's gonna take some getting used to for sure but uh, i'd say i don't know um i liked I was I was used to the meta before, and now everything is changing, so it's definitely hard for everyone. But um, they they add something different, which is I guess good. But it can also be bad in terms of harming the skill skill gaps in the meta. Yeah, I think um, I think a lot of the gadgets are. I mean, there's some that are balanced, but for the most part, um, I think some gadgets are overpowered, and then I think some gadgets are almost useless. So. I think that's the biggest thing is like there needs to be um, balance changes within the gadgets or reworks or something um, because right now um, the meta has completely changed to where like brawlers like M's are completely overpowered and there's almost no counter. Um, so yeah, like they've completely changed everything. Um, every single interaction you can think of basically 
Um, so it's it's a big learning curve for every team, I think. Yeah, in, in my opinion, um, Gadget's the meta way less skilled. Um, and it makes every interaction completely different. Honestly, I'd rather have them out, out of the game and competitive, but every team has to adapt to it, so yeah. They really have not not much, but like there are some gadgets that are way better than others. I, don't, I would like that to change. Um, I really don't like gadgets as much, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that some gadgets are better than others, and I, I think that should be changed. Hmm. More color bands would be nice because that's always the thing that's going to happen. Some brawlers are just going to be better than others at most modes. Like, some are just going to be better than others. And more like two or two more brawler bands per match would be nice. But I think gadgets should be nerfed a bit. Or not nerfed, but they just need to be balanced and some just need to be reworked. Like Dynamite gadget, it's not really as beneficial to use as like an M's gadget, for example. And yeah, I think they should be balanced a bit. You know, one gadget makes a huge difference. Um, what kind of team comp you run. Um, and then it becomes like, I think right now with gadgets, it, it changed it more so it's like a guessing game. Um, like there's no one comp that that wins on a single map anymore. I don't think mm -hmm. um, So like you kind of have to keep trying to counter the other person's comp with a new strategy with gadgets basically so Yeah, yeah I like to, I like to add something like I think it's gonna be more applicable when there's more than one gadget available for a brawler if that's were to happen mm -hmm. uh, as there are two star powers Do you think having star powers paired with gadget like certain star powers paired with a gadget? makes the gadget better or is it just solely the gadget alone that really makes it stand out i i think the gadgets because definitely some of them are very overpowered compared to others like the amps one as we use for an example that's like very useful and you kind of have to have her mm -hmm. whereas the mics um gadget are very helpful and the star power don't really um like i'd say balancing needs to be accounted for uh, for most of the gadgets mm -hmm. but yeah yeah i think that'll definitely come with time as well um as somebody who uh, has seen a lot of the casual fan base reacting to gadgets um a lot of them have the same perception where some gadgets are really strong some gadgets are really useless but gadgets overall make the game a little bit more in depth and a little bit more fun um so it's very interesting to see the um opposite side of that from the pro perspective and saying how much it's changing the meta and how some gadgets are potentially unhealthy for the meta so very interesting to hear that um and one final question um before you guys get to wrap things up if you could add anything to brawl stars what would it be oh, i don't know so that's a tough question probably another game mode um i like um the i forget the name President Plunder, I believe, was the one. It's mm -hmm. the one that's like Catch with the Flag. That was I, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, so maybe something like that would be interesting and competitive, I think. I think I would add, um, I think I've mentioned this before, but some sort of like rank system. Um, I know Power Play is kind of a rank system, but um, I would want something more like right now, Star Points are. are for a lot of the higher up community um, are not that important. Mm -hmm. So like maybe like um, in most games they have like tiers like bronze, gold, silver. I think um, there should be some sort of like ladder uh, rank system in Brawl Stars that you, if you keep winning, you rank up. Um, and then the higher you get, you could also get noticed by pro players. Um, and then that would help people uh, that want to get competitive um, to make their way into the competitive scene. Um, because otherwise, um, unless you're you're really good and someone notices you on ladder or you play like 24 hours a day, um, it's it's really hard for people to get noticed um, and join the competitive scene. So, yeah. Uh, I'd probably add a 5v5 game mode because we've been playing 3v3s, you know, for two years now. And I think 
a 5v5 five, five game just completely change competitive and it would be really fun in VCs as well and strat the strategies would be this um like chaotic For, uh, kind of going back to all three but we'll start with going to prayers and plunder um there was talks of people throwing ideas out that there could be like a limited time playlist um as so like for example the there was a game slot added in for the uh, championship challenge, the uh, PSG challenge. Do you think it'd be a good idea to have a limited time slot where it's just they Supercell can just put in game modes that they want to test and just have it continuous on cycle with present plunder, um, hot zone, or any other game modes they introduce and kind of get feedback that way? I think that'd be definitely helpful for what they want to achieve as to um, the play rate of such modes are uh, yeah it's like i think that they removed maps and removed some of the events because they weren't played as much as the others so i think that it's definitely it would definitely help them in testing and i'm totally down for that cool and then um on the power play session uh corey you mentioned having a rank system do you think a rank system would fit into the current structure of power play or do you think they would have to completely revamp it to get to that rank system I think um, they could have like they could potentially do two separate rank systems, one for um, showdown, one for three v three. Doing the cross play like they have uh, with power play, where you get to play both, um, you would see I, I, you see a lot of uh, showdown players higher up in the power play um, leaderboards, and then you also see a lot of some of the best three v three players not even make it to top two hundred because they don't play showdown so i think the best way to do it would be to have two separate um ranked ranked ladders or ranked modes um to kind of get the best of both worlds the best showdown players and the best 3v3 players so yeah cool and then now on touching on the 5v5 game mode um i've had a couple ideas where it's 5v5 would be a great for a game mode like capture the flag um, not 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 really present plunder, but um, kind of moving away from that present theme, but having capture the flag in five v five, or taking it like a um, almost like a, a traditional MOBA approach where there's towers on each side. There could be Ike turrets on each side. Um, is that kind of where your thought was for five v five game mode, Tyrant? Yeah, at first I thought of a capture the flag game mode. Or even like a simple death match, like bouncy, I think would be pretty fun. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Right now, Club Wars. I really liked, I really like the Clash Royale Club Wars and the um, Clash of Clans Club Wars. I mean, Band Wars and Brawl Stars, they are Club Wars, but I would really like that to come. Eventually, I think that would be really competitive with the top bands or clubs, whatever. And yeah, I would really like that to come in the near future. Yeah, there have been so many ideas floating around the community for Club Wars and having it be something that's like what like what do you what do you envision Club Wars being? Do you envision it being a full one hundred versus one hundred? Um one of the ideas I've seen is having like an opt in out system where you select players or players select which game modes they want to play for their club and you can only have like a maximum amount of players play in those game modes to earn points for the club or do you envision it more something like each team plays once uh and it just rotates game modes kind of like power play and you have to have everybody who's opted into clan wars um play within a 24-hour window um or have you not thought about it that far? I have not thought about it that far, but um, I really like that. It would be like the same as power play. Every club should adapt to it in a way. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be fair for every club to do that. I think that's a really good idea, honestly. Cool. So is there anything else you guys would like to add? I just want to thank everyone uh, that's was supporting us. Um, we know we have some fans out there. Um, and you know we're gonna keep grinding and uh we're gonna hopefully come out with uh we're gonna we're gonna go to the world finals because we're 
pretty much right up there. Um, so, and also we have an Omen club that we just opened up. If anyone wants to join, I, I just want to shout out my teammates um, for making the game interesting and you know always have fun in the VCs. And um, without them, I don't think you know it's it's hard to see where I'd be at because you know they make the game interesting for me. They keep me grinding, and so you know I think we bring out the best of each other, and um, that's why I think we make for one of the best teams uh, in NA, maybe the world, so. I like it, I like it. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, there's been some diehard supporters for us, uh, even when we weren't as known throughout the community. And it's just heartwarming to see people stick with us and support us since um, wherever we came from and how much we've grown. It's just it's just something it's a it's a great feeling and uh having supporters just makes me want to play the game and i honestly love this game uh, i've been playing this for like every day since ever since the day i installed it so definitely the community it's great um and if it weren't for them i probably wouldn't be playing um i'm really happy so far with my team what we have accomplished um i really do think uh, we can make it to the world finals. It's a dream that I would and that I would like to accomplish, and I think we are in a good way to do that. So, yeah. All right. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me on the channel today. It was a pleasure getting to know you guys a little bit more, and hopefully, you guys in the audience learned a little bit more about Omen Elite. I will leave all the links to their social medias in the description below if you guys want to follow them along and cheer for them in the North American Regional Finals. Um, so, guys, thank you all for coming on the channel. It was a pleasure, and uh, good luck in the qualifiers and the rest of the championship series. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks for having us. All right, so that is going to do it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe for more content. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you guys don't miss any Supercell content. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later. Peace out.